Good morning. Um, it is now time for uh, time in our service for our scripture reading today. Um, and we will continue um, in the book of Matthew um, in chapter 27. The bulletin says 32 through 66, but it's actually 27 through 66. And that's on page 834 and 835 um, if you're going to use the Pew Bible. Um, before I get started, just a couple of comments. Um, yesterday, we all celebrated our independence as a nation because of many brave men and women who gave their lives. Um, we have freedom as a nation. We're independent from the tyranny of back then of Great Britain, and which is a great thing. Now we've enjoyed that for 239 years, I guess, and especially that uh, we're doing what we're doing right now. We have the freedom to gather as a church here at Grace Heritage and to worship our God as he or has ordained us to do. And we just continue to pray that we'll continue to have that freedom. But as I was preparing to read today's scripture, that theme of freedom with the 4th of July and the scripture just kind of rang through. Um, here we see one man, one God, Jesus Christ, gave his life for all of mankind, past, present, and future. For all of those that would put their and will put their faith and trust in him and but this is a much greater freedom unlike the revolutionary war which ended in a final peace treaty there was no peace treaty but a curtain was torn and now we have the freedom to approach the throne of grace to approach our God's throne because that barrier the barrier of sin has been taken away by Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross, paying the penalty for our sins that we so much deserve. And now we are free from the tyranny or the bondage of sin because the power and the penalty of sin died with Christ on the cross, as we'll read. And we are also now free to repent and believe in our Lord Jesus Christ and freely commit our lives to him. So join me now and follow along as I read some of the final details of how God demonstrated his great, great love for us. Matthew 27, starting in verse 27. <coughs> then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him, and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they went out, they found a man of S Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he could not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God. Come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he desires him. For he, if, for he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lemma samathani. That is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah and and. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. The other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. 
And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yield up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after, their, after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were so many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph the mother and the, of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how that imposter said while he was still alive, After three days I will rise. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead, and the last fraud will be the worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. Bless the reading of God's holy word.